oh my god, this is so great, because it's everything that I've been wanting to play for probably the last 10 or 15 years. Childhood arcade, man, you know, great memories, you know, 80s, early 90s, so it's just the best memories you can have. The moment you walk in the door, you see Pac-Man and Donkey Kong. So the first thing I was doing was looking for Frogger and Qbert and you know, Millipede, Centipede, all the typical games we used to plug into the Atari. One of the pinball games in there, my grandpa actually had in his basement. There was a Black Knight game in there that we grew up playing in my grandpa's basement. So that was, that was total taking me back. When I selected this building, uh, I got one that was significantly larger than the collection uh, needed to fit in. When we got the building, we were at about 85 games. Um, and I very specifically wanted to be able to position the games in a way where all of the side art would be revealed. And over the years that we've been here, um, we keep having to kind of expand games and move them around to continue to allow that. When we first moved in, we were only on the first floor. So the games were kind of side by side. Uh, but as soon as I could, we moved games upstairs to spread things out. And ever since then, we've been able to put the games out on a bias angle so that you can see uh, you know, what the side of the game looks like. And it's, it's just, there was so much effort put into the artwork to surround the game because they couldn't do it on the screen. So in order to trigger your imagination, they did all sorts of art and storytelling around it on the cabinet. And that's its own special thing. That sound. I am in a pizza place with my best friend from high school. We used to play this all the time. I haven't seen him for many, many years. He's in California now. But even though I can no longer play this game, this was those years. And a picture, I don't have a picture of those days. And I couldn't see it even if I did. So, but when I heard that, when I was just able to come back to this game, yeah, it was connection. It was connection to my best friend. It was uh, connection to, um, yeah, to those days growing up that you, you can't get back. But somehow being able to play that game again, this game, or at least hear it, yeah, for a moment you're touching those days again. And uh, that's special. That's very special. would I? You know, you would think, you would think that, okay, you can't see it anymore, so why would you care? Go find something else. Go, um, go, go listen to an audiobook or go, go do something else. And yet, I, I, I guess, maybe because vision isn't all what this is about. Maybe that's the proof that there's more going on here. I think people that see are constantly thinking about their eyes and that that's all that exists. And that's not all that exists here. It's listening to the people, it's the environment, it's, um, there, there, there's much more going on. And uh, I, maybe, maybe I just loved all this so much that uh, maybe just losing eyesight was only one small facet, but the love of what it represented is still there. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Maybe it's realizing that I just placed fourth. <laughs> exciting thing I get out of it is when I see somebody who comes in uh, and is 25 years into their career and tired and exhausted from this crazy world uh, and all of a sudden it's just the shade lifts up and their childhood's there and you're looking into the eyes of a 12 year old and they just they're relieved and just they catch their breath and they, they're out of the present for a second and they go back and that's, that's everything. 
for me. This is having that response.